I'm going to be spending the next 100 days in one of Ark Survival Evolve's most hardcore mods, Primal Fear. Here, I will need to work my way up from the lowly Toxic tier, all the way to the godlike spirit beasts, facing off against countless bosses time and time again, before reaching my final destination, Pecan's Revenge. Can I go on to defeat Primal Fear? Oh, here we go! Another awesome adventure begins. A few things to note, I am on a brand new map, so no. I have no freaking idea where anything is. Plus, it's primal fear. Luckily, I do have company, but more on that a bit later. For now, I am on a server, and it's pretty late. I need to get things done ASAP. I worked as quickly as I could, farming some items to get the basic gear. I then ventured out to survey the land, and found a few welcoming gifts, but that was about it. I soon discovered that it was too dangerous to travel any further. Returning to my tiny corner plot of sanctuary, there is where I proceeded to build a shack made out of thatch and spent the rest of the night hoping that I would see the next morning. It was day two and I already felt the need to find a way out of this spot. There was just barely any resources around and too many threats in the vicinity. Fortunately, I was able to rack up a few levels overnight, allowing me to craft some hunting gear. Just on the other side of my makeshift base, I was able to spot a couple of suitable candidates, trying my best to take him out. Well, things don't always go the way you'd expect them, although patience and determination work hand in hand. As in time, the Ark Gods answered my prayers. The primal tech Stego took out the Morilla tops for me. I just had to sneak up to it, grab the hide and run for cover. Yikes! With my newfound hide, I was able to craft the most deadliest weapon known to raptors. Oh yeah, they quivered with fear at the sound of its name, boulders. Anyways, I took out some raptors got me some resources and built a raft. Day 3. I went on farming resources in order to craft some wooden structures to get a raft base going. I figured this seems the best way forward. While working on my raft base, I thought it would be a good idea to start working on an egg farm, as I would need a lot of eggs. I then went ahead and knocked out a female dillo, fed it some food and waited for the tame. Yeah, that was pretty much it. It was on day 4, the ties began to change, as I was able to find a few pteranodons while on my journey. I just had to try and tame them. I knew this would alter the course of my future here. Luckily, I had bolos and primal spears. It made quick work knocking out those pteranodons. I just had to be really steady with those jabs. Didn't want to aggro that stego. However, I had to be quick on my feet. There were terror birds nearby. Nothing a bola and some arrows couldn't handle. For the other, I had some help from a very kind Samaritan Stego, but this is so. On the other hand, I bagged some meat for my Tyrannodons. I just had to wait for them to tame up. Now with the rates that we had, it took ages. It almost felt like forever, right up until the next day in fact. To be honest, I was quite bored waiting for them to tame up. Considering I had to wait a while, this is the perfect opportunity to introduce today's sponsor, Mech Arena. Mech Arena is a fast-paced third-person mech shooter with its competitive PvP matches, a choice from loads of weapons, and mechs with special abilities is a playstyle for everyone. Take to the battlefield choosing between a ton of game modes, from 5v5 death matches to your very own custom match, and my personal favorite, control points. Capture and defend as many control points as possible, or simply destroy your opponents with your tricked out mech. Now that's something I do enjoy. And by the way, this is so action packed that it takes just 5 minutes to complete a match. Mech Arena isn't like any of the other mech shooters. It has smaller, tighter maps for fast-paced gameplay and builds for developing skills rather than reflex shooters. There's so much happening this month in Mech Arena, including Battle Pass Season 19 and special events to unlock new weapons, skins and a new pilot, Neve. So what are you waiting for? Download Mech Arena today, completely free for Android, iOS and PC. Use the link in my description or scan the QR code on the screen for a free starter pack worth 30 a skin, an amateur crate, and 5,000 credits. Join me for Total Mech domination. So I checked out the area I was in, discovering crystals. Oh boy, was I excited about that. I instantly crafted myself a spyglass. And well, I went ahead messing around with some of the locals. Basically, I needed hide and I needed it bad, so I had to take him out. Later on, I was able to craft a bed for a respawn point and a forge for some metal. Day 6, I returned to my sanctuary with my newly tamed pteranodons. And of course, you guessed 
watched it, I began breeding them. Not for any specific stats, rather for backups, as I knew it probably wouldn't last. While waiting for my pteranodons, I worked on my raft, adding a few little extras, crafting a smithy, and then worked on extending the raft itself. I did plan on getting some metal that evening. Unfortunately, it was impossible to see anything in that fog, so I was left with no other option but to call it a night. I had completed my raft extension and was finally able to go out for that metal run. The other thing that I had to take care of was getting resources for a pteranodon saddle. Following the river, I had found the perfect spot with the resources needed for that saddle. I just had to extract those resources. You see, that was a bit of a challenge, because for one, the levels were extremely high. We had max levels of 600, and two, I had crappy weapons. However, it didn't stop me from trying. I pressed on and fought my way over to the next day, farming for those resources. And guess what? I managed to get that saddle and went ahead with hatching my pteranodon egg. Now that I had a decent level pteranodon, I could fly and reach places other dinos couldn't. So, I stripped down my raft base and relocated to a higher and more safer area. It is there that I chose to build a more permanent base for myself with the structures that I had from my raft base. It was day 10 and I had troubles getting eggs from those dinos I had tamed. Actually, I haven't seen anything from them. So to solve this problem, I decided to go out and tame a few dodos. I figured it would give me a better chance of getting some eggs. I found a couple of dodos, brought them back to base, knocked them out and waited for them to tame. There was also this iguanodon that I tried to tame. Like I was able to knock it out and stuff, but I left it unattended. So looks like something had a free meal. Oh well, guess I'll give it a go another time. Alrighty, for day 11, I had a couple of things in mind to do. Firstly, I needed to get some crops going, so I went out gathering resources to craft several crop plots for them seeds. I also had to sort out the fertilizer part for my crops, and for that, I decided to tame a Fiomia. You'd get loads of juicy poop from that. Lastly, I went in for a sneaky Iguanodon tame. I say sneaky, well, that's because there was a Chaos Therizino nearby, and I didn't want to mess around with that. Day 12, well, this was really just another farming gig, collecting a bunch of resources in preparation for a primal fear bench, and at the same time, prepping for some toxic kibble. The next two days, I decided to work on building some type of greenhouse with the little resources that I had and fixing some piping for my crops as well. Now that was something. As you may know, I was pretty far and high up from any water source, making this task quite challenging. Although, with much determination, I was able to pull it off. Then I worked on getting resources to craft a soul terminal, and that will greatly increase my egg production. A few greenhouse structures for a slight boost in crop production, and finally, Finally, I was actually able to cook up a few toxic kibble. Days 15 and 16, I worked solely on taming toxic dinos for the next year. I searched the map and found a couple of toxic dodos, which I proceeded to trank and knock out, gave them the required kibble and bagged a mated pair. Along the way, I did spot Muffin Man's base. Yeah, he started way before me, so he obviously had a lot of things going for him. Anyways, I also spotted this sweet little parasol that I also decided to tame. Day 17. I figured it was still early days, so I sort of still had some time to work on things on the side. Besides, I really had to upgrade my base to stone tier. It would probably last a lot longer than wood, so I spent this day farming up some goodies to help me upgrade my base from wood tier to the stone age. It was time to start working on the next tier of dinos. The easiest and best dinos to work with for eggs were dodos, so I scoured the land for any alpha dodos I could tame. Fortunately, I found a few that were in a somewhat safe area, and wasting no time at all, I drank them, gave them alpha kibble, and waited for the tames. Back at base, I began breeding my dodos. I needed those extra alphas for a little experiment. Also, now that I had a soul terminal, I started to see a huge increase in egg production, and to boost that even further, I was told to tame an oviraptor, which I did. Somehow, it still worked with the soul terminal. At the same time, I thought it would be good to upgrade my right. Near base, there were some pteranodons, and one of them, an alpha variant. Unfortunately, you couldn't use bowlers on them, so I had to painstakingly trank the pteranodon until it was knocked out. But eventually, I freaking got the tame. 
Okay, so remember that experiment I mentioned previously that I wanted to try? Well, this is it. But first, I had to grab a couple of things to craft this. A weapon of mass destruction. Oh uh, yeah, I uh, also had to sacrifice a lot of my dodos for this. But it did work out and it worked pretty darn good too. I got heaps and heaps of alpha hide and blood from it, allowing me to get that all-important alpha pteranodon set. Day 22, I spotted a freaking max level Alpha Pteranodon on the map. It was also the perfect mate for mine. I set out with my beefed up taming gear and tracked down this alpha bird. Yet again, I had to painstakingly track the Pteranodon as I didn't know how to trap it, neither did I have the resources to make those advanced tools. Eventually, after some time tracking the Pteranodon, I managed to knock it out and I was also able to tame it. Back at base, breeding commenced, this time breeding for the best stats out of the pair I had and a few extras for some resources. Oh man, I tell you what, this chainsaw is a thing of beauty. No idea why I hadn't used it before. On a lighter note, I had one superfly birdie and it packed a good punch too, so much so that I decided to go out and farm some of those wild dinos for them juicy loots. It was just glorious. It was day 26 and about that time to tame up some creatures from the next tier. After upgrading my taming gear, I ventured out in search for some elemental creatures. I was able to find a few, although it seemed impossible to tame any of them. Well, mainly because they got vaporized. Anyways, my journey continued. That's when I spotted this beauty, a fire feather light. The area was covered with trees, so I had to clear them out in order to see what was going on. But that is when the longest ordeal began. You see, I had to knock out this feather light and it proved to be one heck of a fiery, feisty bird. Its torpor was super high and I may have misjudged the situation. However, I kept on trying. Arrow after arrow wasted on this feather light and it soon began to get dark. Plus, there was an origin RG around. I tried my best for a very long time, got its torpor halfway even. Eventually, I realized this was a lost cause. So I put down my taming gear, packed up, and for the first time, I bailed. Day 27. Now this time I worked a little smarter. I prepped up for another day of taming and got myself a taming trap, which I should have done before. Anyways, I spotted a fire parrot, cleared the area from all of those nasties and placed down my taming pen. From there, I went ahead and lured the parrot into the taming pen. I must admit that this was a bit tricky and actually I almost lost more than just my pants for that. However, I did pull myself together and tried again. Again. This time, it works like a charm. The fire parrot was trapped. I began tracking it and in no time, it was knocked out. And in no time, I was able to get the tame. While waiting to find out if I got any eggs from my fire parrot, I decided to go out and farm a whole lot of loot from taking out some of the dinos of the land. Oh boy, this was so addictive as I was so into collecting all that juicy loot. So much so that I completely lost all focus and somehow got wrecked by a spirit giant bee. Just great! The thing is, I left all of my elemental kibble in the pteranodon. Yeah, I had to go back to try and retrieve it. It was easier said than done. So I returned to the great spirit honeybee and pleaded for mercy, but it didn't consider my plea. I had to defy all odds, sneaking up to where my lifeless pteranodon laid, gracefully reaching into its body and snatching all that it had. Man, was that a close one. Day 30, and it was quite apparent that there was something wrong with the fire parrot. It wasn't laying any eggs, and I needed those eggs for the next tier. Fortunately, I found a fire Archaeopteryx at the desert. I went in with a taming trap and found a good spot to place it down. From there, I kited the bird into the trap with great ease and began tranking it. Knocking it out, fitted the kibble that I had and got the tame. Finally, after a long struggle trying to get elemental legs, I actually got some. So you know what's next, right? Yep, working on the next tier of dinos. This tier was pretty easy. I just dino napped a few apex dillos, took them to a safer location and tamed them there. While breeding them, I thought I'd go out and tame a gacha, which I was able to find. And I also went ahead and knocked it out quite easily too. I rushed back to base to craft it a few kippo and then returned to the gacha. 
<laughs> yeah, what I didn't realize is that it was a passive tame. Anyways, it was also too late to change anything because the buffoon dodo just wasted the gacha and somehow it got me too. What a little screep. But on a somewhat brighter note, at least I had an endless supply of Apex blood and hide. For the next two days, I spent this time taming some helper dinos. They were things I needed to do and surely help was what was needed. Not far from base, I spotted an alpha Anki, which I knocked out and tamed. Then just on the other side of the mountain stood an alpha Dodickers, which I did go ahead and knock out and also got the tame. Wanting to get myself a primal sniper, I went out farming resources for it. Well, doing so, I found the perfect spot for farming rare flowers, mushrooms and cementing paste. While the Yankee was doing an okay job at collecting those resources, I needed something more efficient and I knew exactly what to get. Oh yeah, you bet! I needed to tame the mighty Therizino. Not far from the swamp where I was farming was an apex Therizino. I tried tranking it from the back of my Pteranodon, quickly realizing that this wasn't actually going to work. There was just way too many dangerous creatures around and the theory's topo, well, that was also super high. So I decided to go ahead and cook up a taming pen and then try to kite the theory away from danger. I then found a good spot to place the taming pen down and proceeded to kite the theory into it. From there, it was pretty much a piece of cake. Tranking the therizino until it was knocked out, gave it some kibble and waited for the tame. Yo peeps, I had so many things to do that I actually didn't give building a base any thought. To be honest, I could have done with the tiny base I had for quite a while, but it just wouldn't be right. So I had to do something about it. I had to build some sort of cool base with the time I had. Luckily, I had some inspiration from Muffin Man. Well, it wasn't really what he did, but the idea he had, it helped. Also, those darn helper dinos, they weren't much help really. Although, I did find a backup to use. I used that ray gun or whatever you call it. Anyways, over the next few days, I spent this time farming up resources to build this awesome floating base. It was a simple design, but all the resources that was needed, that is what took the longest. But in the end, this is what I came up with. And man, did I love the way it turned out. Hey yo, it was that time to upgrade my flyer again and I knew the perfect creature to go for. I was a bit anxious as I knew this creature was really OP and it was the fastest flyer in this mod. Or at least that's what I think. Yep, I'm talking about the Fable Grifficon. With my taming pen placed, I proceeded cautiously trying to catch the Grifficon to it. I steadied myself and tagged the Grifficon, hoping to get it trapped. Oh man, what I forgot was that these things were huge and couldn't fit in the normal dino gates. Big rip, like literally. Anyways, I was back at it. I knew the trap couldn't hold the Grifficon, however, I could still use it to my advantage. I tried every possible way and angle to trank the Grifficon. Funny enough, with all of my efforts, the darn Grifficon got stuck in between trees. Now that was cool. So I tranked it as fast as possible until it started to flee and followed pursuit. I wasn't looking forward to this part as I knew a lot of dangerous dinos were out there and after putting in all that effort I really didn't want to lose this Grifficon. Fortunately after waiting for the coast to clear I went in for the final shot and knocked the Grifficon out. I was so relieved that it was safe I quickly gave it some kibble and waited for my Grifficon to tame. Now that I had an OP flyer I went out hunting down some advanced elemental creatures for their feathers. The only way to get them feathers was to take him out. I also decided to tame some of the lower levels, knocking out two of them and eventually taming them. The thing is, at the time I thought I was taming a mated pair and I was ready to close that chapter. Until... Well, until day 44, when I started prepping up a little breeding area for my dinos. I hooked up electricity, did all the wiring and crafted a few ACs. That's when I thought it was the perfect time to breed my dark parrots for feathers. Yeah. Let's just say things didn't go so well. And it also took me quite a while to figure out why things didn't work. 
P-Grip. Okay, so day 45, I wanted to solve my parrot situation. Though there wasn't any of them that I could find. In the light of that news, I went ahead taming the next tier of dinos. Of course, I went for the easiest dinos I could find. And this time, I went ahead and tamed a mated pair of Omega Sarkos. They were really easy to tame. Day 46, finally, I spotted a low-level dark parrot on the map. I quickly prepped up my taming gear and rushed over to the spot. There I began tracking it until it was lights out for the parrot. Fed it the kibble so that it could tame. Back at base, I started breeding my parrots. This time, I had the right stuff. Day 47, I began collecting resources to upgrade my primal sniper and also to craft a few things back at base. It was also time for me to move some of the things from my old base into my new floating base. With the resources I collected earlier, I was able to kit my new base with the most of the crafting stations that was needed. From smithies, fabricators, chemistry benches, the lot. Alrighty, guess what? I spotted another Griffith gun on the map and it was the perfect mate for the one I had. I chased it down firing trank bullets at it from a distance while it terrorized dinos close to it. This went on for quite a while until I managed to get its torpor high enough that it started to flee. I followed pursuit, tranking it in the hopes of knocking it out. I did manage to complete this task. However, while trying to fend off the little critters around, I hit the graphic on by mistake. My heart just sank. I was so frustrated at that point that I just wanted to destroy the graphic on and everything around. But just then, I thought of a way out. I rushed back to base to craft a few structures and returned to the graphic on. My plan was to build a trap that was big to contain the graphic on and wake it up with those special stimulants I had on me. What do you know? It actually worked better than I thought it would. Once the Gryphicon was up and trapped, I just had to re-knock it out again and, well, fed it some kibble and waited for the Gryphicon to tame up. Later that day and over the next few days, I continued breeding my Gryphicon, breeding to get the best stats out of the pair and a few extras for resources and backups. You would always need backups on Primal Fear. While waiting for my Gryphons to breed, I decided to work on getting more of those special resources. A bunch of those different types of feathers and more apex blood and hide. Yo peeps, this was the life. Day 53 was probably one of my luckiest days here in Ark. You see, I set out to take down a primal dino and I knew that this was going to be a long battle. These dinos had crazy amounts of HP and my Gryphicon didn't do crazy amounts of damage, but I knew it could do the job. So while I was attacking the primal raptor, this screamed little dino tackles a demonic power. I thought all hope was lost as I worked on this for quite a while. But when it all settled, the raptor's carcass remained. I just had to wait for the perfect moment when I was able to swoop down and secure those much needed resources. Later on, I decided to go after another primal raptor. And you wouldn't believe it, but this raptor decided to attack another demonic parasaur, allowing me to grab some easy primal blood. So previously, I found a really OP primal sniper blueprint and I figured with all the loot I collected so far it could be possible to actually craft this sniper. I set off collecting all the resources needed to craft a grinder. Oh yeah, this was my special weapon against the grind. Then I took all of the loot in storage, minced them all up and received a shocking amount of resources. I still had to farm a few more resources for the sniper which I did and eventually got my hands on that juicy Godliath primal sniper with 600 plus damage. Over the next two days, I worked on getting some fabled eggs. For that, I decided to tame a mated pair of fabled pteranodons. They were pretty easy to tame as I targeted low levels and I had my OP sniper with me. Returning to base, breeding was in order. Breeding a few extra pteranodons for a boost in egg production and then some for a few little extra resources on the side. I had some extra time, so I decided to take down another primal raptor. This time, there was no help unfortunately. I had to take this one down the hard way. After a long battle, the raptor finally surrendered and blessed us with gifts from the gods. Ah oh, yeah, it was time to get my first demonic dino. I chose to go for parasaurs as they were easy to tame, required less kibble and they took out primals without a sweat. So I knew they were the perfect dinos to get at the time. There was a parasaur at the desert that I wanted to tame. I just had to be 
very careful taming this, as there was a Chaos Therizino nearby. So I took my time tracking this puppy and tried to kite it to a safer area. With much luck, all went well. I managed to lead the Parasaur away from the Therry and knocked it out, gave it the required kibble and bagged a demonic monster. I then decided to test out its strength, setting it free to attack a primal raptor. And boy, did it just smash it. Day 59, I spotted another demonic parasol at the swamp and I had to get it. This would really set me up for the next round of bosses that needed to be done. This time around, the taming process took longer than expected. I didn't really have loads of primal bullets and there were a lot of pesky dinos that interrupted. Also, I had to try my best to keep the parasol from swimming out to sea. Didn't want that happening now, do we? Anyways, long story short, the demonic parasol went down and I was able to tame it. Later that day and over the next few days, I continued breeding my parasols. Luckily, they pretty much had similar stats. All that was needed was the imprinting boost and a few extra resources. That is. Oh boy, was this parasaur beast! I honestly set out to farm up some primals that day, which cuddles my parasaur did quite efficiently. What I didn't realize is that it could take down origin dinos just as good. It was by chance that I decided to try and take them on, and from there, we started farming everything. It was so much fun. Artifacto the Great also got caught in the mix. This was it. We were on our way now, peeps. Day 63, I spotted a really high level demonic thorny dragon on the map and actually this is what I was waiting for. My parasols were good but this thing was next level. With all that farming I did previously, I received an OP primal compound bow and all that origin blood too. So taming this thorny dragon was literally a one shot wonder. It was then all about waiting for the thorny dragon to eat up some num nums, which I did have to go and prepare. On day 64, I was finally able to get the kibble for the thorny dragon. I fed it the food and got the tame. Although there wasn't any time to muck around, I went ahead farming the requirements for the next tier of bosses, taking out a bunch of origins, primals and whatever got in the way too. To be honest, this part is what I hated the most. All of the tokens and requirements that was needed to be farmed over and over and over again. Yeah, I wasn't into that. It was day 60 and I decided to take on the Reaper Empress with my Parasaur. I was fairly confident that we could take it down, although there were some doubts. So I set up a little battle arena consisting of pillars and a tech force field and summoned in the Reaper Empress. Immediately, things turned crazy. Fire and bombs everywhere. Also, it did seem to me that the force field wasn't working. I banked that it would work to keep me safe from the attacks of the Reaper. Unfortunately, we fought our best and even did a lot of damage to the Reaper itself. But we succumbed to her sheer power. All was not lost though. I did have backups, so I quickly got one ready and returned to the battlefield, this time overpowering the mighty Empress Queen and defeated her at last. In the early hours of day 68, I summoned the tameable version of the Reaper Empress to find out if she would make a good addition to my team. With an origin arrow equipped, I waited for the perfect time to strike. When it revealed itself, I swooped in and tagged the Reaper Queen. Unfortunately, it was just a bit too close. And as for me and my dear little candy floss, it was pretty much nighty night. On a lighter note, I did manage to knock out the Reaper Empress and I was also able to feed the Reaper its kibble, even though it was somehow stuck underground. Day 69, I spotted a decent level demonic thorny dragon on the map and I needed to tame it. Time was running away from me as I had so much things still left to do. The good thing is, this was a really easy tame. All I had to do was shoot it with an origin arrow from the back of my new Graphicon and waited for it to go to sleep. Gave it kibble to tame and rushed back to base to start breeding my thorny dragons. While that was going on, I took care of the ones I didn't need and got a boatload of resources from them. I also started farming for the bosses with my Reaper Queen. Yeah, she was pretty decent and doing a good amount of damage, but in my opinion, she wasn't doing that great. I needed something with a little more oomph 
Alrighty, it was back to it. Over the next few days, I continued farming boss requirements. My thorny dragon was ready, so we did most of the heavy lifting. We farmed multiple origins all over the map, worked on those primal dinos, and took out some of those celestials and demonics too. I needed all of those goodies to fight the next few bosses. Yeah. Great stuff. Funny story, really. You see, I somehow summoned the Celestial Emperor close to base and it just smashed most of my greenhouse build. Luckily, it was just that. Anyways, I had to act fast in that time and try to kite the Emperor away from my base. Once it was at a safe distance from base, I unleashed the full power of my thorny dragon. And in no time at all, we took down the Celestial Emperor. This time, I changed my force field to the S+. Plus version and this one seemed to work yo this was a crazy day it was time to face off against the chaos guardian i searched everywhere on the map for a good spot to fight these bosses as i knew without some sort of natural trap these bosses would be extremely difficult so i took a gamble and decided to fight it in the aberration cave hoping for it to get stuck somewhere at first it seemed i was wrong but by some luck of events i managed to get it stuck in one of the corners i began plus it with the thorny dragon's attack hoping that this would end soon as i was afraid it would move from that spot actually after some time it happened the chaos guardian did fly away from the spot it was in so i cautiously checked the area and spotted the guardian i reluctantly attacked the guardian and as soon as i did that i ran back to safety wherever that was luckily i was able to kite it back to the little choky hold and that's my first Friends is where I finished off the Chaos Guardian. Day 76, I decided to go ahead and check up on how Muffin Man was doing and sort of lend a helping hand. You see, we were somewhat at the same level now, so we could actually join forces and allow for an easier road to the final stretch of Primal Fear. Well, that's exactly what I wanted to achieve, and together we opted to take on the Spirit Guardian. Now, this was Muffin Man's first encounter with the Spirit Guardian, so I didn't really want to take away the experience of tackling this mighty beast. I simply watched over the whole process, which, by the way, took a few attempts. Muffin Man was having some issues with the Guardian, but to be honest, this was way more difficult than the Chaos version. At some point, I did try to help trap this thing. However, I just completely messed things up. The good thing is, I survived that round, but finally, after a few more attempts, the Guardian was trapped, and we spared no time in launching our attacks. Both both Muffin Man and I threw everything we had at the Spirit Guardian and simply blasted it into pieces. Oh yeah, I have to put this in here. I was about to have load shedding for those that know about it. So I didn't have much time and I needed to get a celestial egg layer before leaving the server. I quickly flew off to find a low level celestial largy and tranked it as fast as I could. Got it knocked out and bagged a celestial. It was day 78 and it was time for me to upgrade my ride. Reaching spirit and chaos tier, I was simply spoiled for choice. The best part was there in the desert stood a max freaking level spirit griffin it was a no-brainer really so i shut off to where it was and proceeded to assess the situation the problem was that this griffin was aggroed on some nearby dinos and made getting a clear shot with my origin arrow quite impossible the only thing that i could think of was to try to somehow kite the griffin away and believe me i tried my best but nothing was able to shake the griffin off of those carbon enemies i got rather impatient and went in for a few shots with my arrows hoping to get lucky as you may have guessed it it didn't work and i also almost lost another fable griffin losing all of my origin arrows i had to return to base to craft a few more however this was actually what i needed to do because when i got back to the spirit griffin it had calmed down allowing me to get close enough to trank it and from there i just had to keep my distance and wait for the spirit griffin to fall off to sleep and that's how 
Power tames the max level Spirit Griffin. Let's go! Now, this was more like it. I spotted another high level Griffin on the map, so I prepped my gear and rushed off to tame it. This one was pretty easy to tame. I swooped in for the shot, tagged the Griffin, and well, waited for it to go to sleep. Once it was knocked out, I fitted the Spirit up and tamed another Spirit Griffin. Back at base, I went ahead with breeding my Griffins. Their stats were almost identical, so I just needed to breed them for backups and also for the imprinting boost. Day 80 to 83, I began farming all those darn dinos. It's madness how much of resources you needed and how many times you had to get them. I know, I complain a lot, but this was just crazy. So I took down more primals and origins and all the other things that wandered into my path. However, I did spot this cool little chaos bee and I went ahead to tame it, just for the funsies. Muffin Man and I decided to tribe up due to the fact that we needed to use the force field for the next couple of battles. On a positive note, at least I didn't have to farm those darn dinos so much. Anyways, for the next two days, we spent it farming a bunch of reapers and celestial emperors for the next tier of bosses. Uh, yes, let's not forget about farming more of those darn origin tokens and the souls of all the other dinos that was required. By the way, while I was farming those dinos, I found another chaos bee and tamed it. It also was a perfect mate for my other bee, so I started breeding them. I also automated the process so I could continue farming boss requirements. It didn't end there. Along the way, I spotted a chaos rock elemental and like it was just lying there, begging to be tamed and I just couldn't resist. So I tamed another chaos creature and well, I still had to continue farming for more resources. So yeah, I took out more origins, primals and all the other stuff too. So if you thought I was done farming those requirements, sadly, you were wrong. I needed a whole lot more to farm. Everything from origins to primals to celestials and demonics. It was a never ending story. However, it needed to be done. For the next two days, I decided to test out the Nova and Creator bosses at my new boss arena. I took all the precautions making this spot as safe as possible. Well, for the Nova, I found it to be a walk in the park. As long as you stayed clear of her attacks and kept your distance, it was pretty much a guaranteed win if you had an OP flyer. And also, after defeating Nova, I grabbed the egg and descended my thorny dragon. For the Creator, things were a little more tricky. The most dangerous part was kiting it over to the force field. Once I had it where I wanted it, it was pretty much smooth sailing from there. I had to keep my guard up though, as it still did damage to my griffin, even though we were in the force field. When it was all said and done, I defeated both bosses and found the perfect strategy to farm the next few. Returning to base from those wins, I went ahead hatching and raising my very own Nova. Now with my surefire strategy, I took on the next few Novas and creators that were required from days 93 to 95. By this time, Muffin Man joined in with his set of Novas and Creators as well. I didn't complain as this meant less farming for me. Days 96, 97, 98 and 99 were spent fighting each of the elemental colossus. With my Nova and my little safe haven, we took down those elemental colossus with ease. The best thing about it was that Muffin Man joined in the fight halfway with his Nova. Together, we just destroyed those bosses. Alrighty, my good friends, this was it. The day had arrived, day 100. It was time to face off against the ultimate boss, Pecan's Revenge. Oh boy, this battle was going to be one heck of an epic showdown. Muffin Man and I stood side by side, summoning in Pecan's Revenge, as we readied our Novas to unleash their mighty power upon what stood between us and total domination. Or so, that's what we thought. However, fate had a twist in store for us. You see, the boss spawned just beyond the reach of our attacks, at the opposite mountain in fact. In order to solve this predicament, I volunteered to kite Pecan closer to our battlefield, fully aware that this would be a death sentence. Alas, I managed to lure him closer, but at a cost. Sadly, I had to say a brief goodbye to my spirit griffin thunder. With the loss of my griffin fresh in my mind, I returned to the battleground with a vengeance. 
refusing to let my griffin's death go in vain. Together, our novas relentlessly fought Pickens revenge with everything we had, fighting fire with fire, explosions, chaos, and total pandemonium reigning all around us. The battle raged on throughout the day, sending in attack after attack. I also kept a watchful eye on my nova as Pickens revenge unleashed devastating blows upon it, and it seemed as though this battle would never end. And yet, we pressed on, fighting with all we had to give. And finally, we began to see a glimmer of light amidst the darkness. We went in with our last reserves of strength and unleashed our final stand. As the dust settled, there, laying upon the ground, Pekan's revenge, motionless and lifeless. Victory was ours. We had defeated Primal Fear.